All right, what's going on everyone? Props are a very common thing that we define on our view components. They allow us to pass data from a parent component to a child component. And sometimes we may need to send over a handful of props in the form of an object to a child component. And what I wanna show you within this video is my preferred way to handle this in a clean and organized way. All right, so I went ahead and put together a demo application for this using Nux3. Now, if you are using View 3, this will work for you as well. So what we have going on inside this demo is pretty simple. First off, we're just creating a user, which is being set equal to a ref, and then we're typing it with this uh, user type that I imported here at the top of the script tag, and we can see that actual user type being created right here. Now, back inside of the app.view file, we also have a component called user card. And then inside of this component, it's very simple, very bare bones. We just have the typical view file structure. And then since we're gonna be using that user type, I went ahead and imported that here. And we also have the define props macro, which is how we'll be defining our props that we wanna use within this component. Okay, so let's say for example, we wanna take our user object that we have here and we want to send it to this user card component. And we could do this through what is called a prop. So typically how you would see this done in most examples that I see when looking at other view code is you might create what is called a user prop. So we can say colon user, this is gonna be the prop that we'll be looking for on this component of user card. And then we'll set this equal to our user object that we have right here. And then here inside of our user card component, we can uncomment our define props macro. And then within here, we can just define that user prop. So we'll say user, and then we can type this using our user type that we have imported. So we'll just say user like this. And now we set up a user prop that we can use within our user card component. And then here inside of our template, if we wanted to, we could output some of those prop values. So what we could do inside of this div is say something like user, and then we can do dot, and we should get a nice list of all the available properties that we can use inside of this component. So we'll just say first name like this. Now, the problem that I have with this approach, although it's not a wrong way of handling something like this, it's just very granular. And when you're building out components that have props, it's a good idea to be specific in terms of what those props are. And with something like this, where we have a user prop that is an entire object, to me, that's not very specific. So a approach I like a little bit better is instead of having a prop that is bound to an entire object, is I like to have a prop in my component for each property that lives within that object. So in this example that I have for the demo, the user object has four different properties. So what we wanna do is create four different props here inside of this component. And it'll look something like this. So we'll just start off by doing the ID, and then we can just type this to the user type that we have. And then we can reference a actual property within that type, and we can just do that inside of a bracket. And then we can say ID. And then we're gonna to wanna to do this for the remaining three properties that we have inside of that object. And then we should have something that looks like this, where we now have a prop defined for each one of the properties that live within that user object. And then we no longer need to have this user prop, so we can go ahead and remove that. And we'll also want to remove this reference that we have here to our user prop within our template. Now back here inside of the parent component where we're defining our user card component, we need to make a few updates to make this work. So first off, we no longer have this user prop, so we can go ahead and remove this. Now you might be thinking that since we now have four different props here inside of our user card component, that we need to create a corresponding prop here on our user card component that's being defined within the parent. So you might do something like this where you create an ID prop, so we'll say colon ID, and then we'll set this equal to our user, and then we can say that ID on there. And then you do the same thing for the first name, the last name, and email, where you'd create a corresponding prop on this user card component. And then you'd have something that looks like this. Now, this isn't the wrong way to do it, but it's not the most efficient way. So instead of having to define out all these individual properties that are being referenced to this object, we can actually bind the entire object to our user card component. So what we can do is a vbind, and then we can set this equal to our user object. And this essentially is going to be the same exact thing as if we were to define all these different props here on our component individually, but now we can do it in a single line with the vbind. And how I like to think about it is that this vbind is going to destructure this user object that we have, so that way we can use those destructured properties inside of our user card component. And now we can go ahead and remove all these different props that we have here, and we can do the same thing with only one line, which as you can see is a lot more cleaner and efficient. 
And now here inside of our user card component, it's a lot more clear what exactly this component is doing in regards to the props. So instead of just having a big object here inside of our user card component, we have essentially destructured these into individual props so that way we can see which props are being used throughout this component. And if you were to have more properties on that specific object, you don't have to declare them. You can only declare the ones that you actually want to be using. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and you were able to learn something new. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this. And I know it's been a long time coming, but the Nux course is going to be releasing soon, at least a portion of it. So if you are interested in learning more about Nux, be sure to head over to learnnux.dev and join the waiting list. I will be releasing a portion of the course in the next couple weeks. And for those interested in improving their front end skills, be sure to check out an application that I built called Web Dev Daily is essentially a application that offers you front end challenges to complete inside of an innovative VS Code like browser IDE and I'll leave the link down below in the description. It's free to join. But anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.